In this video, I'm going to show you a typical week in my life day trading Forex. Hey, and welcome back to Mindfully Trading. My name is Emily, and on Mindfully Trading, I share educational videos about day trading Forex, as well as an insight into my personal journey as a Forex trader. I've been trading for over five years now. I originally started day trading the US stock market with Warrior Trading. Since then, I've transitioned to day trading the Forex market, and I focus primarily on day trading pound against the dollar. I do this full time alongside looking after my two little boys who are four months old and two years old so I definitely have my hands full. I day trade full-time in my live account with Vantage Markets and I also day trade with the prop firm The Five Percenters. If you're not sure what a prop firm is I have created a separate video that goes into more detail and I'll talk a little bit more about The Five Percenters later in this video. From my experience so far I've found that one of the quite often misunderstood concepts when it comes to day trading is the idea that every day you can go and you can make thousands and thousands and thousands and it happens every day. In my experience, that just does not always happen because the market is in a constant state of change. And if you're not prepared for that and you go in expecting to make thousands and thousands every single day and then you don't, you quickly come up against some pretty dangerous blocks that activate trading psychology, revenge trading and FOMO. And that can quite often be the pitfall of traders. Well, in this video, I want to share with you my experience on an average, a typical weekday trading Forex, focusing on pound dollar. It's been a very choppy week this week if we look at the overall cycle of the market, which I'm going to do with you in just a moment. So I'm going to share with you how to carry out profit analysis at the start of the week, how to calculate whether the week is going to be a week that you could be aggressive on or you should be conservative on, and pretty much an insight into my strategy day trading Forex. If you want to follow along with me, I do have a link to a free trading plan download, so make sure you check that out in the link below. And you can also find a link to my latest book. It's just been released, Forex Trading 101. It's brilliant if you are a complete beginner. If you don't know where to start, it's a great starting point for you. It has everything in there to get started day trading Forex. As always, all the other resources and software that I use is linked below. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel, and let's get straight to it. Hey guys, so here we are. This is a recap to what I did at the start of the week, starting with Monday the 5th of February. And as you can see here, I'm on Forex Factory. This is a brilliant platform, it's free, and it is fantastic for carrying out fundamental analysis. They have a brilliant calendar on here that allows you to see upcoming economic news and events that's scheduled for the week. And at the moment, I've got it um, filtered here on high impact. So that's what these red flags are and also the um, amber ones. Simply, all I do at the start of the week is I have a look to see at what major news is coming up for the week and I compare this to the technicals and it helps me to craft an idea in advance on which days are probably going to be good days to trade and which days are probably going to be good days to sit out. So for example, here on the Monday, there was high impact news at 12 for the US dollar and also at 3 p.m. for the US dollar ISM services. Now from past experience, I know that with ISM services and with it being later released here in the UK, that can often create a lot of choppiness in the market. Now personally, my strategy does not incorporate um, news breakout trades. I tend to wait for the dust to settle and then I like to get in afterwards and take a piece of the pie. And because that's so late in the afternoon and because this historically tends to be very choppy, um, I tend to sit this out. So I knew pretty much looking at Monday that it'd probably be good to just see how the dust settles and go into the market Tuesday to take a potential trade. Looking into Tuesday for the dollar, there was nothing major. There was some FOMC news released later in the day, but it wasn't a high impact and it was very later in the day, so I knew that there'd be an opportunity potentially before then based on technicals. Moving into Wednesday, it was a similar situation. There was no high impact news for the dollar. And then Thursday was the usual unemployment claims release on at 1.30, which tends to give a really nice opportunity for trading. Friday, no news for the dollar. So this already starts me off for my plan for the week. Once I have that crafted, I then jump onto the charts. This is the most important time frame, in my opinion, to start your analysis on at the beginning of the week and also at the start of each day, and that is indeed the daily time frame. That's because this time frame is most respected by traders, it's used by institutional banks, by corporations, and it tends to hold authority over the other time frames. On the daily, we can see that although price had been pushing up, it's kind of started to taper off and we had a short term break of the structure. And since then, price has just simply been ranging. 
And for me, I like to wait for a clear break of this range, although you can find some interesting opportunities intraday using the faster time frames for scalping positions. I find that price can be a lot more predictable if you get clear breakouts of ranges like this. Whilst we're in a range, it's a little bit more choppy and harder to predict, meaning it's more risky. And personally, I like to reduce my position size during these phases of the market cycle. It's such an important part of analysis to understand that every day is different and that's why the daily time frame is crucial for analysis because you can't go in every day with the same plan. You have to alter and change depending on what cycle that asset is currently in. So once I'd established where we were on pound dollar, this further confirmed my original plan once I did my fundamental analysis to just sit back on the Monday and see what happened. If we were going to stay in this range or if we were going to get a breakout. And Monday evening, this is how the candle closed. We had a very strong push down out of this range. Tuesday morning, I carried out this analysis. I saw that we had a strong push down on the Monday. And from this, I thought that I would be definitely interested in taking a short based on the fact that we had this breakout. So I was looking intraday for the best place to go short. Looking at intraday price action for the Tuesday, I could see from the open here that we had pretty much been swinging higher. And then we had this big bearish candle down as we entered into the London session. And since then price had been swinging lower and it came down to the towards the open of the day. At this point, I used my Fibonacci retracement tool from the highest point. I dropped it to the lows and I calculated an area for a short. This was in confluence with some other key levels with institutional price levels. And I set my short, I set a stop above the high and I set a target, but this is what happened. Price went straight up to my stop. So I started off the first trade of the week on the Tuesday with one loss. As price made a new high of day at this level here and as we entered into the New York session I decided that if we broke this high and started swinging higher then price was probably going to carry on up to that range because there is such a high chance of a failed breakout and obviously I am intraday trading here so we have to move with what is happening at the moment. To price started to push up and we had a strong close above this high. As we got the push up, I set a more aggressive position here for an entry long on a retest of this level with a stop just below this structure. The price triggered me in literally by a couple of marginal pips. So it was a perfect sniper entry and it pretty much trended on up. I originally had a 3R target set, but as price trended higher, I trailed a stop, which got triggered at this point here. So in the end, I got out of this trade and I made a 2R profit. So it was two times what I was risking. This together with my previous loss on the day put me up by 1R on the Tuesday. Wednesday morning, I had a look at the daily time frame. So we had the breakout down on the Monday, we had the strong push up on the Tuesday, which hadn't quite broken back into that range. So for me, it wasn't a complete fail breakout because it didn't immediately charge back in, but it wasn't really weakness either. It was quite an indecisive move. Plus Wednesdays are super busy for me. I have a lot of activities that I do with my boys. I take them out to some play groups and we get up to some different activities, which meant that it'd be hard for me to stay on the chart. So I decided Wednesday to just sit out. I didn't have any areas I was interested in. I had no alerts set on my phone. So I had a non-trading day on the Wednesday. Moving on into Thursday. Thursday morning, I had a look at you guessed it, the daily time frame. And as you can see, Wednesday didn't really give that much movement. We had a little push back up into this range, but it was there was no crazy momentum going on. Plus on the Thursday, I knew we had our news release coming out in the afternoon for US dollar. So I decided to wait until the news release and to see what opportunities were available. At 1.30, the news was released on the dollar. It was good for the dollar, which meant that the pound dropped slightly and continued this overall intraday downtrend we had. We'd left this range area and price had been swinging lower. So in line with this overall movement, I basically calculated a position to get in on a retest for a trend continuation trade short. I set my sell limit, I set my stop, and I set my target. This was also in line with some key levels and I got triggered into this trade short on the Thursday. Price pushed up, it activated my sell order. 
and it continued up and hit my stop. So I lost one position on this trade, which put me down to back to break even on the week. So it was Thursday, I was break even, I was tired, I've been up in the night doing night fees, I've had a busy week and I thought, ah, oh, I should have just kept my one win for the week. But trading doesn't always work like that. You can't just pick and choose, you have to just trade what the market is telling you. And so I decided that I wasn't finished yet. I certainly wasn't revenge trading, I felt pretty centered at this point. I was just observing the fact that price had pushed up, it had taken out these structures, we'd just gone into the New York session and there's no more news due to be released, so now we're working on technicals. So naturally we have a change in behavior here and momentum coming into the upside. Price is quite likely to want to return to this level and to some key daily levels. So I decided to look for a position for a long. And as price dropped down to the optimum trade entry level on my FIB, I had an order set pretty much at the place where I had gotten short before I then went long. I used the largest stop below the lows here and I set my target up here looking for another retest of this range area. Once again, I had another beautiful sniper entry. It literally just tapped into my entry here, it triggered me long, and then price just trended over the afternoon and hit my target later in the evening. Now looking at this, I had a very large stop because I wasn't sure whether price was going to retest these lows, but naturally in hindsight, it would have been a lot nicer to have shortened this stop, which would have obviously increased my profit potential. But these are all lessons that we can take from trades that we have taken. So this trade put me back up on the week. And just hop into my account here in MetaTrader 5. This is the account that I've been trading with the prop from the 5 percenters. And these are all the trades I took this week, the ones I have just shared with you. So you can see them in my broker. They have been recaps of live trades I've taken in the market and my profits here on the week. Now my profit for now my profit target, my particular strategy I follow for prop firms, I have a strict profit target of 1.5R. I don't aim super high, I just like to take my target, I like to take my profit and I like to get out. And any further trades that I like to take, I take in my personal live account with Vantage. I haven't taken any further trades in my live account this week because pound dollar is just simply not set up for any aggressive trading in my opinion. It's currently in a choppy, uncertain range in market. Once we get some clear breakouts, some clear momentum coming in, then I can start to get more excited and active with my trading, taking multiple positions and trying to gain more profit. But in the meantime, it's important to adjust your strategy to account for market cycles, that's what I've done this week, and to just take the profit when you can. You might be wondering why I am aiming for such a short amount with the five percenters, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that now. I'm currently enrolled in their funding program, the Hyper Growth Program, and I am treating this program like a longer term investment rather than an account that I want to flip and make loads on straight away. With the Hyper Growth Program, it's a one step program, so I have a 10% profit target to hit, once I hit that, whilst respecting the rules, which is a max loss of 6%, then I can start drawing a profit from the account. So any profits that I make are split between myself and the company, the 5 percenters. And for the particular account that I am on, I am on the $40,000 account size, which means that for this evaluation period of time, I'm trading a $20,000 account. But as I said before, the stop out level is quite tight, it's 6%. So I have to take a very small position size to be able to respect that stop out level if I want to protect my account. And trading's all about protecting the account and risk management. So to not get ahead of myself, to stay on track, to avoid emotional trading, I just aim for my 1.5 hour target every week and then I stop and then I switch from trading that account to my live account if I want to take any additional trades. If you want any more information about the five percenters, I have got a link below in the description. They have a variety of different programs available if funding is something that you're interested in. And I have created a separate video on them. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know by smashing the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.